Hi everyone, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Priya Dashni Shanmugam, Professor of Microbiology. And in this lecture, I am going to talk to you about Ascaris lumbricoides, which is commonly known as the roundworm. So, the learning objectives for this session will be, I will talk to you briefly about the morphology of the parasite, how the adult form looks like and how the ova look like, a little bit about the life cycle of the parasite, pathogenesis, that is how it causes the disease, what are the clinical features and the lab diagnosis of this infection. So, before going on to the actual description of Ascaris, we would have seen earlier that the intestinal worms are all classified into three types. You have the cestodes which comprise of the tapeworms, the flat segmented tapeworms. Then you have the flukes or the trematodes which are the flat worms but they are leaf shaped and they are not segmented. And the third category is the nematodes and NEMA, NEMA means thread. So, they are all round worms. So, the cut section will be round and they are usually cylindrical in shape. So, this Ascaris lumbricoides belongs to the category of nematodes and incidentally, it is the largest intestinal nematode which parasitizes human beings. And this Ascaris is again a very common worm infestation found in human beings and where it is present? It lives in the small intestine. So, the habitat is the small intestine, the jejunum of man and it maintains its position there by means of the muscle tone. This infection is worldwide in distribution, but it is more prevalent in the tropics and in the subtropical areas and it is more prevalent in the countryside than in the city. And this is a picture of the adult worms of Ascaris. So, this is the female worm and this is the male worm. The female worm is usually larger that is this length is also more as well as the diameter is also more. The male worms are smaller and the tail end is curved ventrally, right. And regarding the morphology of the adult worm, so the common features for both the worms as I already showed you in the picture, they are cylindrical in shape. The body of the worm is rounded but the two ends are tapering. The anterior end where the mouth end is present is thinner than the posterior end. And the worm is creamy white or pinkish in color. And at the anterior end, you have the mouth and it has got three lips. And these three lips are having very fine teeth. And the position of the lips is that one is dorsal and two are ventral. So, this is a picture of the mouth end of this worm. There are three lips, okay, dorsal and ventral. And this margin is actually very minute teeth are lining this margin which is not visible at this magnification. And uh, now coming on to the body of the worm, so we saw the anterior end. So, inside the body there is a body cavity and this cavity has got a fluid which is known as ascaron or ascarase. This is highly irritant to us human beings and inside this fluid the digestive as well as the reproductive organs will be floating. And these worms have got a complete digestive tract meaning they have an anal opening. It is not ending as a closed tube, but you have an opening to the exterior right from the mouth end to the anal canal. So, we call it as a complete digestive tract. The reproductive organs are also present inside the same body fluid. They are suspended there and they are tubular in shape. And we can develop a lot of allergic manifestations to this irritant fluid, which is not, it is a kind of a protease enzyme, right. The lifespan of this adult worm is around one year or slightly less than one year. Now, coming to the morphology of the two worms in particular. So, in this picture you can see this is a female as well as the male worm. The male worm is shorter. So, it is 15 to 25 centimeters in length and it is slightly slender when compared to the female worm. So, the diameter is 3 to 4 millimeters in diameter. The ventrally curved tail end you can see here. So, the tail end is here and it is coiled or curled. And inside the body cavity, there is only a single reproductive tubule. And then at the tail end, the anus opens along with the ejaculatory duct, meaning the reproductive system as well as the alimentary system have a common opening. Whereas, if you take the female, it is longer and stouter. So, this is that was 15 to 25, this is 25 to 40 centimeters in length and 5 mm in diameter. 
and uh, there are two reproductive tubules inside the female whereas here there is only one reproductive tubule. The openings of the reproductive system as well as the alimentary canal are different. The reproductive system opening is called as the vulva and is located ventrally at the junction of the anterior and the middle third of the body. The tail end is however straight but when you see the male we saw that it is curved and at the tail end you have only the anus and that is subterminal in its location. Subterminal means just a little bit away from the end. So, you have a separate opening for the reproductive as well as the alimentary canal whereas in the male worm it is a common opening. Why we need to know this? Because when the patient comes to you giving you the history that they have passed a worm or they have brought the worm to you, most of the pediatricians will face this. The parent will bring the worm and show to you and you will have to identify it. So, it is better to have know some identifying features. This is the position of the anterior end or the mouth end. Again, we are able to see the dorsal lips. This is just for revision and then the two ventral lips and having fine teeth. This is the tail end of the worm or the posterior end of the worm. In the female, we saw that the tail end is uh, straight, it is conical and you have the opening of the alimentary canal known as the anus. Whereas in the male, it is end is going to be curl, curved or it is coiled and uh, you have the opening of both the reproductive as well as the gastrointestinal tract here. At the end, you have these finely sharp projections are called as copulatory spicules which help in copulation. 